Okay, so this is a video about organizing dictionaries, dictionary objects into lists. This picture right here is a set of dictionaries that are all stuck in a list, and the list is called My Grocery List. And it feeds this app, little cheesy app here called My, My Groceries. And basically what happens is a dictionary is a set of key value pairs. And these key value pairs, if you repeat them over and over again, make nice little objects that have a consistent pattern to them. And they have a way to read out based on what the key label is, a value that goes with it for that set of information. And if you take that whole set, which is called the dictionary, and stick it into a list, then it would also have an index number on it for that dictionary item. And then you could process each of these in a repeated pattern. And you could also call the entire group of it by a single name, in this case, my grocery list. Now, I've used a, a classic data um, data design structure here by giving this list, giving these dictionary items a key, a classic key called a, a, a number, an item number. This item number in this case is set by the coder or the programmer because you're just setting item number one, item number two, and item number three. Um, but it can also be set in code. So when you are making another list because you're having your user type the data in here and then you're saving the item to the list, you can simply reserve this item number as something the user would not type in. And instead, you put that item number in as whatever the list item is going to be. So when you're adding an item to the list, the list is about to get one more item long. So you could just take the list of the length of the list and add one and throw that in to the item number that you're about to add in into uh, the dictionary item that you're about to add into that list. So that will make the, uh, the item number al always co correspond to the list sequence number, the list index number, which is a convenient little trick. But for now, the data we really are concerned about is what is the item in my list? How many of it am I gonna purchase? And did I buy this yet or not? Did I put it in my cart yet or not? So the item, the first item is milk. I want one gallon of milk. And I want, I'm want. i saying that I have not yet picked this item. It's not yet in my grocery cart as I'm walking around the grocery store. My second item is eggs. I want 12 eggs. And again, I have not yet picked that item. And my third item, because this is a set of test data that I'm going to be using, is rice. I want two pounds of rice. And I'm saying the, that picked is true, meaning I have already put that item in my cart. Now this app has another uh, handy little feature with it besides this, this um, structure up here, which may somehow remain in the final app. It also has a, a hidden space down here. I put this, I made this screen one scrollable. And at the bottom of the screen, I put a horizontal arrangement that includes some testing information. The test information, the first thing says make an empty list. The second one says test list. And there's a piece of code here that just says, take this exact list right here that I just created my test list and throw it into my list viewer. And now I have a set of data that I can work with rapidly. I don't have to retype this every time I'm messing around with my data. Or if I mess something up, I can just empty the list, use the test list, um, and start from where I need to start. These two boxes over here are... Um, are a little testing piece that I created, and they're just label one and label two. And into label one, I throw anything I'm confused about. Like, wait, what is happening here? I don't know why this, this isn't falling through this piece of code, or maybe it is falling through the piece of code, but it's not executing it properly. Well, I want, in this case, I wanted to see, wait, am I in add mode or in edit mode? Is, um, is this item false over here or is it true? Do I really know what I think I have? so that I'm, I'm testing it properly. Now, when this whole thing gets, gets ready to be done, I could just take this horizontal arrangement and hide it. I don't even have to remove it from my code. I just hide it so that if I ever want to go back to my code later and make some changes to the source application, the AIA file, and republish this to a different APK, I would just go right back to the AIA. I would make this horizontal arrangement visible 
And then I would um, start testing again, my new feature or function. And then I would make it invisible and publish my AP APK again. So that's a really neat feature. And um, on your screen, you could just even make it scrollable so it doesn't even get in your way. And you could set the size of the different objects on your screen to be 100% and then just put that down at the bottom and it would be it would work for you very well. Okay, in the next video, what I'm going to be talking to you about is how instead of creating a list where you are physically typing in all the information, how you go about um, adding items to this list by having the user add the data to the list. And then in the third video, what we're going to be talking about is how you would get the user to edit an item so that I've picked an item, I hit the edit button and it jumps back up in here so that I can change something. I don't want 12 eggs. I want 18 eggs. And um, then I, I can't seem to hit the number 18 on my keyboard. And then I resave this item and it comes out again where the eggs are now 18. So that will be video number three. Okay.